I just think they look really, really cheap. Okay, don't hate me for this one. I'm just not into that look and I don't think I ever will be. I just think it almost can look slightly pantomime as well. I'm just not a fan of the cowboy boots. Hi everyone, thank you for joining me and hello if you are new to my channel, welcome. Today's video is all about spring trends, the ones I love and also the ones I don't love so much. So I actually want to preface this video by saying that the beauty of fashion and style is that it's very individual. Um, we all have different tastes and so this video is a reflection of kind of my tastes but also my ethics as well and where I stand on certain types of fashion and kind of the use of them. So hopefully this will be useful for you because fashion and trends and style can be so incredibly overwhelming that it's kind of hard to know where to start and what route to go down. So if you like my style, if you like kind of minimal classic look that's not too trend led, then this video will hopefully be for you. And my channel also will hopefully be for you. Um, if you are new here, make sure you hit that subscribe button for lots more free and easy access content. So I'm going to start with the trends that I'm not really a fan of. I think we've built such a good community here on my channel that I feel like most of you will understand why I'm saying all of these trends that I don't like. And I also think most of you will agree with me. So definitely let me know in the comments. What I love to see is when you all chat together, which is so nice. I just feel like it's a place for us all to come together and share that communal feeling and spirit. So let us get into the first trend that I don't like or that I wouldn't necessarily invest in. Not that I don't like them, but they're not a route I would go down. So the first is the kind of big flower trend that we're seeing a lot at the moment. This was sparked by Magda Buttram and I, they are amazing. Some dresses with the huge flowers on them. And to be honest, this is not something I dislike as a trend. But for me, I think it's something that's very statement. It's very obvious. And once you've worn it once, it's kind of that thing that people notice and they've seen and you can't really restyle it because you've already done it. So it just feels very one-time wear for me and also something that will really just fade out of fashion very quickly. It's very much intense at the minute. Lots of people are wearing this trend. And because it's so intensified, that is when you know a trend will not last very long because it's so oversaturated at the time. I would say though, if you did want to dip your toe into this trend, and like I say, I don't dislike this trend. Um, I think something I've seen going around, I think they sell them at Zara actually, um, like a kind of bow necktie with the flower on. So that way you're just investing less money of course, but also something that you can attach onto different looks and still create um, and give a nod to that trend without maybe buying a whole dress or a top with lots of floral kind of embellishment. Um, and hopefully I'll get some pictures on screen to show you what I mean. But yeah, that's my first one I think I would probably avoid for the most part. Okay, my next is tie dye. Um, we're seeing a comeback of the tie dye and I'm not into it. I was never into it any of the other times that it's been around. Was it a big thing during lockdown? I feel like tie-dye, oh, it was a tie-dye loungewear and yeah, just not for me. I think, again, if you kind of are similar to my style and want that longevity out of your wardrobe, something tie-dye, again, it's a one-time wear kind of thing. It's a statement, nothing wrong with a statement, but I think once you've worn it, you feel like you've worn it and then you probably get bored of it quite quickly. Um, I also think they're really hard to style in terms of color because there's only certain colors you can match. If you've got multiple colors in the tie dye, you don't want to overdo it then with any of your accessories. So it's quite hard to match. We're seeing a lot of tie dye dresses around at the moment. And quite honestly, I think they can look a little bit cheap. I'm just not into that look and I don't think I ever will be. So number three is the sheer trend that's around at the moment. And again, with everything, I think there are ways you can do all of these trends to maybe make them more wearable or maybe suit your style. And if this is your style, then go for it. But 
Personally, I would avoid sheer. I don't think it looks all together very classy. And I just think, again, it's one of those very short-lived trends. You know, we're seeing kind of sheer dresses. And let's face it, they're so incredibly impractical to actually style and wear to have like a whole sheer dress. I mean, how are you gonna do that? I just, I'm just not into it. I don't think it looks nice. Um, just to be totally frank with you, it's just something I would avoid. Okay, number four is not necessarily a trend, but kind of things I've touched on. I'm gonna use an example here of something I don't really love. Um, and that is when something is over exaggerated. So for example, cargo style is in at the moment and I quite like cargo trousers in a very relaxed, minimal way. I think when it starts to go wrong and when it starts to feel too trend led, uh, too try hard um, and too unwearable really, is when the trend kind of takes over the garment itself and kind of that really exaggerated cargo trend, loads of pockets, that real 90s look I'm just not into. I think anything that's too much of an over the top trend won't last long and I just think it almost can look slightly pantomime as well, which is not really a look you want to go for. Okay, so we're seeing a lot of really, really bright colors at the minute. Pinks we're seeing a lot of still. That pink is still going from the Valentino trend, but I mean, that I just, I can't get on board with that really bright pink, unfortunately. Another trend we're seeing at the minute is this kind of lime green tone. I'm all about green. I think green can look so nice. Different shades of green, from car keys to kind of a soft, pale green, but I just think that really bright, almost fluorescent lime green that we're seeing so much at the minute just, again, feels a little bit cheap and tacky, especially if it's in the wrong kind of fabric, like a polyester in that lime green is just, it just doesn't look nice. It just instantly will cheapen all of your other pieces. So if you are investing in your basics, don't kind of dampen it down by adding something like that in because I don't think, I just don't think it looks very good. And I think this color again is very short lived and looks pretty cheap. Okay, don't hate me for this one because I feel like a lot of people have invested in this or kind of gone down this route. And it's those really embellished, shoes like the i think they're called mac and mac they were the kind of brand that triggered the whole trend around these and honestly i just think some of them in particular i think less slightly more subtle ones like the manolo blanic with the kind of diamantes on them that's that's not what i mean it's those kind of vinyl ones with lots of diamantes and glitter and spiral things going up them i just think they look really really cheap i think it's so hard in fashion when you see a brand that's expensive that's maybe doing well um that a lot of people are investing in to fall down that trap of thinking it looks good because it's from a designer that you're seeing a lot of. Um, and because it's expensive, it automatically means it's good. Actually, if you take a step back and you say, well, imagine this shoe on a market stall selling for 15 pounds, how would it look then? And would I want to buy that piece? So, you know, you might get taken in by the fancy branding in the store and the fact that everyone's wearing it, but actually take a step back and taking that step back and reflecting will really help you make the right decision and think, what if this piece didn't have all that branding surrounding it? And I think those shoes in particular are a really good example of that, is that they just, I think they just look so cheap. I think this is a common thread is that the trends that I don't like are the ones that I think look a little bit tacky and the shoes are that. So yeah, let's move on. Okay, my final one, another pair of footwear. And I do feel like this one may be one of the more controversial ones in the video, just because I think a lot of people like this and that is cowboy boots. Just not a fan of the cowboy boots. I think they're so unflattering. I think they actually ruin nearly every outfit. Again, I think with everything, there's a way to do the cowboy boot um, and it's not um, like an exaggerated way. If you want a slightly more subtle one, like I love the kind of Isabel Morant style, um, the slightly more boho style of boot 
that's different to the kind of full on cowboy look, you know, with the swells up the side and the uh, stitching detail. I just don't think they ever work. I don't think I've ever seen an outfit where I thought those cowboy boots look good um, with that outfit. I just think they ruin outfits. As I say, they're unflattering. They just don't feel very chic or classy to me. And I think they're too much of a trend, too, too exaggerated to kind of be that wearable and versatile, which is what I'm all about in my wardrobe. Okay, so those are the trends I don't like. As I say, a little bit controversial maybe, but like I said before, it's all about personal choice and personal preference. So if you don't agree with me, go and film a video and tell me why not, um, because I'd be really interested to know. And it's always nice to hear other people's opinions and variety is the spice of life. So let's move on to the trends that I do like and why I like them. And I think you'll really see the difference and the contrast between the two. So my first is two trends in one really, and that is relaxed denim mixed with double denim. So we're seeing a lot of double denim around, denim jumpsuits, um, but also that goes quite hand in hand with the trend of relaxed denim. We saw it on the Bottega runway, um, that very relaxed look with Kate Moss and the shirt with the tank top and the relaxed jeans. For me, this is just a winner because I don't like really tight, uncomfortable jeans. Relaxed denim for me is the way to go. It's the way forward. It's comfortable it's wearable, it's versatile. The main reason I think it just looks automatically quite stylish um, while still not going out of fashion. You can wear both pieces separately, but also you can dress them up. So wear that double denim look together and then dress it up with a pair of heels like I've done here and a clutch bag for the, like a kind of relaxed evening look, but also in the daytime, with some ballet flats, with some trainers, with a trench coat thrown over the top is also really a nice look too. So next is a longer length skirt, a midi or a maxi. So I think on this side of my trends video, it's very much about those pieces that are pretty classic, very wearable, things that have been kind of in fashion for years and years. So they're not really going out of style. Um, but they're maybe just having a bit of a moment and that goes for these longer length of skirts. Um, if you don't want to go fully into the trend, go for more of a midi style because then you've got a bit of flexibility with the length of what comes and goes in fashion. But I quite like this longer length at the moment. I'm finding it very, very wearable, very versatile. It instantly makes your outfit feel updated, but also still um, pretty classic and simple, it goes with all the other things in my wardrobe. The one I'm wearing here is from Dish, which I absolutely love. And you can pair it in lots of different ways. So I've gone for my loafers here. Also trainers work nicely, ballet flats, a pair of heels to dress them up in the evening. It's really got that versatility um, and you can wear them different tops too, shirts, t-shirts, tank tops, um, and kind of style them for different occasions, different weathers, and just really make the most of it. So the third trend I am loving at the moment are these kind of collarless cardigans slash jackets. I'm really confused as to how to name this piece. It's kind of like a ladylike smart jacket slash cardigan. I've gone for my cardigan option here from Massimo Dutti. They just work so nicely to elevate your basics. So you can put them with some jeans and a t-shirt and then throwing this um, kind of cardigan over the top really just makes the outfit feel something special. It feels smart, it feels put together. If you're not a blazers person, um, it kind of does the same job as a blazer. Um, if you are petite and don't like the oversized blazer trend, then go down this route instead. Again, this is such a classic item. This is very Chanel-esque. It's something that will always be in fashion. We saw this look in the 80s, we've seen it in the 50s, we've seen it in the 60s, a short kind of cropped cardigan. We're seeing it again now. It's just one of those things that's always in style and always feels classy. So my next trend is a co-ord or a matching set. I'm loving this at the minute. Again, this is something we've kind of been seeing for many years now, these matching sets. The one I've gone for in particular today is from Fourth and Reckless. I just think this is so cool. I love a stripe. It feels classic, but I think this nice relaxed style just has a bit of an edge to it. Um, again, style it in different ways. You can dress this up, dress this down with trainers. And then the beauty of a co-ord is that you can wear them separately. This 
uh, shirt would make a really nice beach cover up. If you didn't want to go down the striped route, striped trousers, by the way, are another trend that I'm loving at the minute this, that this kind of touches on. Just the striped trouser, I think, works so nicely. I linked some in my previous Arquette video as well. But if you didn't want to go down the striped route, you could go for something like a nice linen set in a beige or a black. Arquette do some really good versions of those as well. Um, but that kind of concept of a matching look, I think sits really nicely, which brings me on to the next trend, kind of the same thing, slightly different, is suiting. Um, again, this is something not very new as such, but it's just having a bit of a spotlight for the past couple of years, really. Having a suit or a matching set of a blazer and trousers um, or something kind of similar to create that suit look. Again, very, very versatile, looks great for work, but I also love that look dressed down with tank top maybe. The one I've gone for here is this one from Asino, a linen version. If it's a bit warmer where you are this spring, this is a really nice option, especially for kind of smart casual workwear if it's hot in your country. I know a lot of you watch from warmer countries, um, so this is an option for you. But this again is a really nice piece to um, kind of style in so many different ways. You've got lots of options with this. And again, if you wanted to go for a slightly more versatile one, you could go for something like a black suit and then you've got countless styling options. Next is the bomber jacket. Again, it's something that kind of comes back around Every couple of years, really, we see bomber jackets have a bit of a moment, and they are this year. I think I like them because they make everything feel a little bit cooler. Again, if you're someone who has a predominantly classic wardrobe and just want those subtle changes and details to make it feel on trend and maybe a little bit more personality to the classic pieces, then these are kind of the trends you want to go down. So a bomber jacket, I love this one from Zara with padded shoulder. Again, lots of styling options, though. So you can wear them with your maxi or midi skirts. You could wear them with wide leg trousers. You can wear them with straight leg jeans. You know, it's not just a one-time wear like the previous trends I was talking about. And I think that is probably the significant difference in all of these things. And then finally, the piece I am wearing now, and that is a contrast collared shirt. Um, we're seeing a lot of these kind of uh, blue stripe ones with a white collar. Again, this is just a really timeless classic shirt. This is from Marcella London. There's nothing kind of particularly trend about this other than that it's having that trend moment, if that makes sense. So again, so versatile. I love it with kind of trousers like this. These are some linen ones from Dish, like a wide leg creamy shade, but also you could just go for um, non-linen versions. Some white jeans would look nice, some blue denim would look nice, um, camel trousers, camel skirts, beiges, khaki colors. You can dress it up in the evening. This would look really nice. This whole outfit actually with a heel in the evening just looks so chic and put together. Um, you can pop a blazer over the shoulders, lots of different ways. I mean, it's a classic blue shirt at the end of the day, but this contrast collar just kind of gives a nod to a trend almost, or just kind of elevates such a simple and classic piece. And that's why I love this trend that we're seeing at the minute. So thank you so much for watching. The aim of this video was not to, um, you know, have a go at the trends that I don't like, but it was more to just help you kind of establish where you're at with trends and where you can go with them and how to do trends in a way that's kind of mindful and also and also in a way that doesn't break the bank, that you can get cost per wear out of, and hopefully just kind of showing those two quite extreme contrasts of trends and how you can easily kind of fall down the wrong path and what not to do and how to get back onto the right path with the right trends. Um, hopefully that's kind of been useful in, in giving you some direction with them because it can be an utter minefield out there. So yeah, hopefully this has helped. If you're kind of thinking of a trend that I've not mentioned, either ask me in the comments what I think of it if you're not sure, or think to yourself, how many ways can I wear this? Can I wear this in five different ways with five different outfits? So if, if you can do that, then um, it might be a worthy investment for you. So thanks so much again for watching. Um, make sure you're subscribed, of course. I'd love, love, love to reach a million subscribers within, I don't know, the next four, five, six months. Um, so please subscribe if you enjoy my videos and you've not already. Thank you again and I'll see you in my next one.